Okay guys, we got a couple phones today, uh, right now, uh, from one customer, and funny story, the daughters tried to prove to their mom that they could just put their phones in a uh, Ziploc baggie and go canoeing with it, and then tried to show them, her mom, that they could just dunk, dunk it in the water in the Ziploc baggie, and then the next day their phones wouldn't work. <laughs> so... Don't always try to prove the parents wrong, kids. Um, so I already got the board for the 5S out. Uh, obviously water uh, damage. And the mom wants to save the phones. Isn't really worried about the data. Uh, told me that the kids were like 9 and 11 or 7 and 9. I don't know. It was young. And um, so first thing we're going to do is take these shields off. Uh, go ahead and look at the, go under the microscope and see where the little corrosion is right off the bat um, next to our um, basically that FPC connector is for our front camera and proximity sensor speaker and all that jazz and then this one is our rear camera uh, and this side doesn't look too shabby um, not too shabby there and basically down here it doesn't look too shabby either. Go ahead and take off our little sticker there. Alright, let me zoom out as much as possible. So on the back side, eh, hold on one second. Okay, so back to the back side of it. Um, really the only spot that I seen corrosion was right here um, obviously because the shields still on but if you're gonna put it in the ultrasonic cleaner you got to remove the shields um, and if we look at the actual housing uh, I mean that's a little water damage corrosion right there on the housing um, the connector here yeah, a little bit but that shouldn't stop that camera from functioning down here nothing so uh, basically we're going to take these shields off real fast get our antenna out the way I'm on antenna Okay, antenna is gone. Get my hot air gun fired up. All right. I mean, I guess I could just take a Q-tip and try to clean that up, but it's not how I like to do it. I want to see it clean. Four, three. So max heat. Max air to take shields off. Right, we'll start with this guy, even though there's probably nothing under there. Don't see any corrosion under there. I mean, honestly, I'm just going to take this back one off and leave the bottom one.
right, so I'm glad we did that. Can you see why? Alright, one second. Alright, I'm back. So, since we found that corroded spot uh, on the back side and our last shield is still on the board, uh, I'm going to take it off, especially since we got the water damage sticker here that has been corroded, corroded, has been changed due to moisture. Uh, so let's take this last shield off just so we have the full board board exposed. So we don't have any surprises. Alright, let's... Let's hold it right there. Why not? Or not. Let's go under the scope. And we look pretty clean down there as well, which is good. Alright. So our problem child areas from looking. Also you want you want to look for uh, bleeding solder. So if you see little balls of solder coming out where the um, underfill is that's never a good sign um, if you see that you might as well just pull that component off the board because my experience is it's definitely I mean well let me rephrase this if you see that before you do anything then that's definitely a problem if you heat it up and see that uh, that could be because you were he putting too much heat there and it bled. So if you see that beforehand, that's definitely a good indicator. Alright, so we are going to take this guy and put it under the cleaner. We got two spots, possibly a little bit up here, but nothing major that don't look. Um, that don't look too bad. So, and you know what? Since it's only the top half, not even the top half really the top third that's corroded let's just dip that top into the ultrasonic cleaner and not even risk getting the rest of the board in the cleaner so I will be right back I'm gonna pause the video and I'll be back as soon as it's clean okay so we got the board clean this is the back side this is the back side and that's our spot we had the little thing spotty up here, which was pretty much nothing. Alright, let's forget that. Let's come back down here. Let's check continuity real fast. To ground. So, are you a wire? Grounded? No. Grounded? No. No, no, but that's not, none of these are tied to ground. I can see it from the board. Uh, so not ringing through. Nope. And this ugly guy here is just ugly. Now the only thing that bothers me a little bit is in between here, you can see a little bit of the corrosion still, so possibly corrosion under this guy. Uh, let's flip it over. Let's check these guys. Blah, blah, 
So we got a couple components right here that are not there. Let me see if I've got a 5S. I should. 5S, 5S. Hmm. Don't have a 5S? All right, so we got to do it the old-fashioned way to see if those are no stuff or if they mean something. So let's open up ZXW tool. So let me look under the board here. We are talking about C300, FL39, and FL38. Those three are not on the board. So let's open up. R5S schematic. I don't know what the differences are. Let's just pick one. Alright, control F C three hundred. Has to do with the compass. It's a cap and it does not say no stuff. Alright, so if it said no stuff on it, FL39 does not say no stuff either, C300, FL39 and FL38, do we see FL38 right there, definitely needs to be there. And this is for the compass. Let me see if I can find something that says no stuff just so I can show you. Well, let's just type in no stuff. No stuff. Huh. Maybe no underscore stuff? Something on here should say no stuff. So let's, let's look at the board. So I see one. Let me try to find an easier one here. This is not a complete match of what I'm looking at. Let's try this other 5S board here. And that's more like it. So let's let's come back up here. We are looking for C300, FL39, and FL38. Those three did not change. So those are still the numbers on this, but this design down here definitely looks more like the one I'm looking at. 
and then there's a no stuff right here which is C249 so if we go back to the schematic and type in C249 All right, now this is BS because that's a no stuff. Let's choose a different schematic. So we chose this guy last. Oh, well, let's go with this one. C two forty nine. I know that's a no stuff. Gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's 249 RF. We don't want that. Hmm. Let's choose a different one that is no stuff on the board. Sorry, I'm trying to find something real fast to show you. Okay, so that's in a definite no stuff. Right here. I'm going to show you under the scope. So, this guy at the top, the two uh, pads are nice rounded solder pads. That's definite no stuff. That means nothing is there, nothing should be there. And let's find out which guy that is that is r14 underscore rf so let's go back r14 underscore rf now my mom's knocking on the back door for a computer fix look no stuff see how it says no stuff all right i gotta pause it i'll be right back Okay, so we've got a little bit of work to do here, that's for sure. Um, basically, all this needs to be there. Um, we've got this cap, which is C29298, and it's... Where is my? Sorry, I'm looking for some.
I am looking for something on ZXW. Hold on one second. I wanted to show me. It's not showing me down there <clears throat> which line it's on. Why is it not? Let me check a different schematic. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Yes, it's showing me on the 6. Yes. All right, back to the 5S. All right, so that cap C298 is... On line PP3V0, and it connects. All right, so this cap connects right here. You can see the trace. It comes down to our filter here, which is missing. All right, then the other side of the filter uh, basically is nowhere up top to connect it to. So what sucks is this cap right here is falling off for one because I tried to take continuity reader right here, test from here to here because we should have continuity. Uh, but we don't. So let's knock this guy off and put some more solder on there. Try not to break that pad. Let's... Uh, I'm going to get my micro pencil out. D turn on. Okay. All right, so that's off. Let's try not to break this damn pad here. Let's get a little flux on there and tin those. Where's my flux? I'm gonna try to go a little bit quicker. I know I am a little slow on <coughs> showing you guys here. Come on.
Okay, so what I'm going to try to refrain from doing is using hot air because uh, I don't want to loosen anything else up. And if we don't use hot air, we should be good to go. So I'm going to actually uh, try to use my tweezers here. I'm not a big fan of the tweezers. So let's see what cap that was. Let's go back to desktop view. And this is C298. All right, let's go to our schematic. Well, we know C298 is right here <coughs> where the compass is. So it's these are the the readings that we need. So come on. So what I do have is a bunch of donor boards for sixes. So we'll check and see if we can pull that off of a iPhone six. So let's open up schematic for an iPhone six. So, 20%, 6.3 volts, that's what we want, X5R, that's what we want, 201-1, so that we can take C0301 from an iPhone 6, C0301, C0301 is... right here so we can snag that off of a six let me see i got a six here with that still on it So I got one. Let's take it off of there. Let's go back to scope. All right, so there's the dude we need. Heat to get it off at least. Yeah, I'm here. You got packages? What? Nope. I thought you were my mail lady. No. Let me. <laughs> What's that? All right, let's put this guy on. Let's clean this off. Put all 
kinds of fuzzies on our board. It sounds like fun. It's exactly what we wanted. Y'all got a link to uh, some good Q-tips that don't have all these fuzzies? Let me know. All right, little flux. Little cap. And our tweezers. Please don't make me hate you, tweezers. I know some people love them. I think the reason I don't like them is because they don't pinch together. Together. They're like off. The tips are a little off. All right, let's see how that went. Oh my goodness, I was trying to keep it in the camera. I hate when that happens. Sorry. All right, now we should have continuity from that cap we just put on to that pad. And we should have ground on this side, but not on this side. All right, so one down. go to our desktop view and let's go back up here so we know we need C300 which well we're still on the iPhone 6 let's go to the 5s so we just put C298 back on we need C300 Technically, we don't probably need C300, but since we're doing it, let's just do it. Uh, C300 is... This is our 5S schematic. C300 is a 0.1 UF. 
and 20%, 6.3 volts, X5R ceramic maybe? All right, so 0.1 UF. Darn it, that's not what I wanted. Six. Point one UF. It says four volt. Let's get a different one. Four volt. Twenty percent X five R ceramic. Perfect. So we can take C O two O five off of a six. C O two O five. CO205, CO205, CO205. I know I typed that in right. CO205, which is on the back side here. Let's get a little flex on our board. What worries me is floating these guys because that overfill craps on it. Yes, I said overfill. So what I should have done probably was scratch it off before I heated heat put heat to that. And then they won't float. Okay. I haven't got to the fun part yet. Alright, so now we got filter. Let's make sure our continuity is still on this line from this cap to here. 
Not to here. Ground. Good. And the other one. 5S. Where'd you go? Okay, so C300 talk to the guy right next to it. And this should be ground. I'm going to assume. Alright, so we know the filter we need is FL39. This is the 6, this is the 5S. FL39. Mm -hmm. Let's go to our 6. Boom, so we can take FL1803. FL eighteen oh three. Man, when you stare under the scope, you start looking at things that shouldn't even is not even there. Like me saying that board was not a six or I didn't see it right. It's cause I'm always looking under the scope. And it's making my eyes and my brain be weird. FL1803. Next to the charge port connector. Alright, let's get back under the scope. And ZXW says FL1803 is the third one over. And all these guys are the same. Nope, a lot. The middle one. the third one all right so we want you and you let's get rid of some of that crap Take the board down real fast. So I'm going to take uh, both of them off because I'm pretty sure the one that we got to do next is probably the same. And I guess I could check that real fast. So we need FL39 and FL38. And on the schematic, we know FL39 is the one we were just looked at. Let's try 38. Yes, they're the exact same. So we need both of them. And I know I'm not showing you on the screen here, but just take my word for it. 
All right, so we need both of these filters. All right, let's put one of them on. I don't know what I'm going to do about the other one yet. Because I don't really want to run a jumper all the way from the top to the bottom. But we got to see if we can't make it happen. Hey, what's up, Max? Uh, computer. Yeah? New one? I think you shut off all of a sudden. You can't get it back on. Okay, I'll come over. Oh, Alright, let's put this filter on. So, continuity we should have across. And we should have from here to here. Alright, so that one's back on. This is ground and ground. And this cap goes to here. Alright, so now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do about this filter. This last filter here. Alright, I need to put this somewhere where I'm not gonna lose it. Let's look at ZXW. So we've got the cap. C300 we just put on, and then FL39 we just put on, and then we got FL38. Alright, you see that's how it 
So right there is that trace that goes between this cap and this filter. So the other side, I mean, there's no other uh, connections. Like we're on that side of the filter, if we look, not even on the other side of the board. So if we click on the other side of the filter, we've got to get to the other side of the board. So yeah, let's... Um, Hmm. Let's look at the other side of the board and see where we gotta go. We gotta go on that cap right above U8. Alright, so we gotta hit that second cap. I know you're not seeing it right now. I'm seeing it. Just trying to see how we're going to get there. Alright, this is going to be fun. Y'all watch and pray. Let's go. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach it back. We're going to put it on one side. Get off my damn tweezers. I was really trying not to cuss in this video. I'm going to put a little dab of flux there because it's giving me nothing to stick to. Okay. Let's just do a little continuity here one more time. We should have ground. We should have ground here. We should communicate. Alright, and then this cap to our new filter we just put on. Alright, now we gotta get from this side of the filter over to the other side. Oops. 
a weakness. So let's take. Let's see how big this wire is. I know it's bigger than our wire that we go for underneath BGA, but let's let's see how big this goes. It's 38 aug. See how big it looks under there. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with the other stuff. Man, I don't know. Let's see what the other stuff looks like under there. Definitely thinner. All right, we'll go with this. It's just going to be harder to form, is all. So let's get a little flux flux. Let's get our micro pencil this time. I'm going to turn the board this way. So I can come with my left hand with the wire and hold the iron with my right hand since I am right handed. Who would have guessed that was about to happen? Oh, it's on my wire. I thought it was on the other side of my tip. Alright, so we got our wire on our, uh, <laughs> on our filter. But we also have the filter off the board. That's not what we want. Try to let go of this wire. There we go. That's a good connection on the wire.
I'm sure as soon as I touch that other side, my wire is going to come off. I'm going to try to get a little more solder on our pad there. Just feel like we don't got much on it. There we go. All right, come on. Get in and get out. All right, let's clean that up and see if we're actually attached. Do not want to be attached to whatever this is. <laughs> I'm about to just do us a little bit of different here for shizzle. Make something else that happen. So we can just attach the other side. And we can literally just hit that cap since it's on the same line. We could just put our filter there. So let's just do that. Bigger area for us to tack to, anyways. screen. Yes, I am. <sighs> I need some tweezers.
we'll get there. We'll get there. Turn, 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 turn. Thank you. All right, so we definitely can't have that on that other filter. So let's try to get that off of there. Let's see how that looks like. I'm going to go blow this off real fast. Be right back. Let's continuity that and see if we're even if we're touching that other filter because we cannot have that. We are not. I thought this wire was coated. Why is it? Is this wire not coated? It shouldn't be having any continuity from just touching the wire. This wire is not coated. So, are we going to continue to use that? That's going to cause, could definitely cause problems. Damn it. Let me cut off another piece of that other wire, the bigger wire, because we shouldn't be getting any continuity. Supposed to be enameled, coated, or whatever you want to call it. All right, so now I'm just touching my two leads to the other wire, right? Yeah, see, this one is not ringing for me just touching the wire. We're gonna have to use that one. 
I want this. I guess this stuff is good for short jumps, but not when you got to run it all the way around. You don't want to touch another stuff. So let's take that wire off. Goodbye, wire. And you all get to watch me try to put this wire on. Once we get this on, then we just get to form it. The rest of it's pretty simple. Let's see. Continuity. That looks good enough. We are going to wrap it around. Try not to scratch the enamel coating off of this wire. So I seen Jason from SDS use super glue, super glue, super glue, super glue with a Q-tip or not a Q-tip with a toothpick to hold his jumper wire down once. I don't think we need to do it there. I think that's gonna hold itself. Maybe on the other side. All right, so we got to get to this guy over here. I'll show you on ZXW and desktop ZXW. So we got the left side of FL38 is what we attached our wire to, and we're gonna get to the left side of the cap U347. All right, let's. Let's go back to the microscope. Alright, so this is where we will do the forming. Okay, so this is where I want to use my toothpick and a little bit of super glue. I don't have a toothpick, so what I'm going to use is a needle just 
get a little dab on the end of it. Put that right about there. And get our wire in there. They have used way too much. All right. Let that sit for a second. The reason why we went there um can't figure it out is we want to come through a spot where we can make um, our metal plate not touch and not try to pinch so we'll do that and we'll come all the way across here and probably down and then over and then boom might come down here then through here and then if it comes straight down actually that's on the exact side we need let's see if this is dry enough Stuff takes time, obviously. Maybe one day when I get good at it, I'll be quicker. But, I don't really care. All right, so I don't really know if super glue is conductive. Let's just check and see if we're ringing across these guys. Let's see if we're supposed to be ringing across those guys. Yes, we are. Okay, good. All right, let's keep forming.
Yeah, so my idea of going down that little alleyway is probably not a good idea because it's <coughs> kind of hard to bend and stuff. All right, well, we got to put a little bit more super glue. I got way too much on there. Let's let that sit up a little bit. Get a drink of water. Hit the vape. We are almost there. Go one more small dab of glue on this last bend. Yes, I am blowing at it. <coughs> All right, that should be enough for the super glue. Good time. Oh, Jesus. All right, let's try to get at the stick.
have got to get a new tip for this micro pencil. What happened? What happened? Oh, there we go. All right. That was me pulling the wire after I moved my hand. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Alright, I think we got it on there. Let's try to break it off. Okay. Alright, so let's continuity test some things around it just to make sure we're not touching stuff we shouldn't. As I make noises with my mouth. Alright, so we should not be on ground here. We are not. Ground, left side, not right side. Ground, no. So yeah, this is definitely not touching. We are good, not shorted to ground. Not shorted to ground. Ground, not shorted to ground. All right, we are good on that guy. So honestly, we did that up top there. We are, let's just check and make sure we're not grounded next to that filter we put on. Or not grounded, I didn't mean to say grounded. All right. Move my fat fingers. So we have a cap. The filter attached to the cap because the cap trace is attached to uh, where the filter was supposed to be. So we hit the filter right off the cap, and then on the other side of the filter, we took it to the other end of the line all the way around the board, which, <coughs> excuse me which we came through here tacked it down with super glue thank you Jason and more all the way around and then hit where we're supposed to hit on that line so what I want to check real quick is 
what in the world this gap is and maybe replace it probably don't all right let's just check and see what the phone's doing let's do that how about we do that so let's go to hand cam all right let's plug in a 5s charge port Let's plug in a 5S screen. We're going for the gusto here. We probably shouldn't go for the gusto. Let's hook it up to DC power supply and see if it's pulling any amperage first before we go for the gusto. Alright, DC power supply. <clears throat> uh, 5S, 5S, 5S. Wrong one. Five S, five S. There we go. Turn on power supply. Not drawing any amperage. Good. Well, while we're here, let's prompt the boot with our charger. Prompting, prompting, prompting. Do we have any logos? No, we do not. We're sitting at Hold on. We are at 0 0.20 milliamps. Now we look like we're booting We don't have any image. Let's try it one more time. Prompting, 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 unplugging, sitting at 0.16 milliamps and it's just chilling. 1.6, 1.6, 1.7, then we to 0.22, then we're hitting 0.5, then back down. I saw 0.96, now we're at 0.8, now we're at 0.9. <clears throat> Alright, we're not getting any image. I can definitely feel some heat up top, and it's probably on the other side of that board where that cap is. Let's just take a look. Let's go to ZXW. Look at that big old sucker. So C329. That's an iPhone 6. C329. Next. Goes to Chestnut. And the LCM boost, six bolts. Backlight driver, Chestnut, all that jazz. Let's take that dude off the board. He's pretty fugly.
Bye, Felicia. All right, well, I guess I could have showed you that on camera. I just used my uh, my tweezers here and went like that. That's what I did. That's what I did. All right, so it's gone. Let's see if it was a wire. Probably not, but it's definitely a piece of shit. Dang it, I cussed. All right. Oh, look at that. That should not be doing that, folks. That is a cap. It's not a filter. Filters are what ring across, not caps. So that was definitely bad. Let's get rid of it. Bye, Felicia. Let's see here. Let me hit my vape real fast, please. So, back to ZXW and U3 and an actual 5S would be nice. This is U3 and this is uh, Chestnut Backlight Driver Mesa Boost. Let's zoom out. So it is chestnut. That's what it is. U3 is chestnut. If we zoom in, chestnut has. Oh, come on. Talks to our LCD. Got a lot of power lines coming in. 5v7, 5v1. So U3. Has to be chestnut. What I'm worried about is there being corrosion under chestnut. So now that that big old cap is off, which is U329, this big old dude, which has 10 bolts on it. So that I'm pretty sure we need to replace that. Oh, I'm stretching. All right, so let's replace it. We need a 20, 22 UF, 20% 10 volt. Let's go to the iPhone 6 and type in 22 UF. Nope. 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 10 volt. 22 UF, 20% 10 volt. 22 UF 20% 10 volt X5R X5R 0603 1 0603-1 Alright, so we need an iPhone 6 with C1648 C1648 This big old dude at the bottom of an iPhone 6. Let's steal one. Oh man, it's under there. Darn it. Alright. Well, why not? You don't need to 
this in my face. Gotta get this stupid shield off. This is just a donor board. Hey, look, there's a cap we needed. Perfect. Big old dude. Go away. Let's bring our 5S back into the fold. Let's go under the scope. Scope me. Alright. We'll put our other iron back on. I'm seriously going to order some micro pencil tips as soon as I get done with this video. And now i got to answer the phone. Jake should be here in two minutes. Where are you, Jake? Cell phone fix. This is Matt. Yeah. Six o'clock. Okay, we're open 10 to 2 tomorrow as well. Yep, thanks, Richard. Bye. All right, let's tend these pads. Ring, 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 ring. Let me try to get some of this out of the way. Yeah, punch in my microscope. Perfect. All right. So now, since this is such a huge cap, we are going to try the tweezers because we should be able to grab it and just put it on. Maybe. Yeah, I'm going to probably say not, actually. Because ground on a cap like that is probably going to be like, no, we won't melt. That's how ground sounds, just like that. Or maybe it will. Uh, 
Ah, right off. That did not work. I do not want to use heat right there. Give me one second. The reason why it won't melt it is because those tips are just too small. It's not the amount of heat, it's the size of the iron. Jake! I only got my truck back. Put the motherboard back in, that's the new one. Start there. Get off, get off, get off. All right. Let's grab this soldering iron. See if the heat will transfer. Grab my straight tweezers. See how that did. All right, so if we go back to ZXW and we get on a 5S and we look at that big old dude right here that side should be ground and this side goes underneath chestnut so let's at least see if our ground has continuity Cross. We are grounded. They are definitely connected. Let's try booting it. Let's check that cap actually real fast. <laughs> 